So we know that an adaptation is a design feature in the body of an animal that helps it to survive in its particular habitat. And when we think about the adaptations of an animal, we have to think about all that animal needs to survive. And so we have to consider several things. And we might think about the environment or the habitat that that animal lives in. We might think about what kind of food it's going to eat, what kind of things want to eat it or kill it, and, and really how that animal is going to survive in order to pass its genes on to the next generation. So when we think about fish, we might consider the different habitats that fish may live in, right? So if we think about just ocean fish, perhaps they live in the open ocean. Perhaps they stick to coral reefs, or they live in rock pools. Perhaps they live in mangroves. Mangroves are where trees go right up to the water's edge and, and the tide goes in and the, the fish can hide among the roots of trees. Um, perhaps our fish live in seaweed forests or on the sandy bottom of the floor. Or perhaps our fish don't live in the ocean, perhaps they're inland freshwater fish. And maybe they live in rivers, lakes or creeks. Or perhaps in little muddy billabongs. So think about the habitat and, and what your fish needs to survive. The other thing we need to consider with fish is what they're going to eat. So is a fish a meat eater or a vegetarian? Is it going to eat crabs is, and other fish? Is it going to eat vegetation and algae? Um, perhaps it eats shellfish, in which case it might need a, a mouth that can crack open shells. Um, perhaps it just survives on dead things at the bottom of the ocean floor. Maybe it digs through the sand for insects. Oh, sorry, worms. Perhaps it's a freshwater fish and it catches insects that fall into the water. Or maybe it's a huge whale that opens its mouth wide and, and inhales plankton and eats on that or other things that you can think of. We also need to think about what might eat our fish. So consider other fish that are going to eat it, octopi, crabs, birds or aquatic mammals like um, seals, dolphins and otters. And so as we design the body of this fish, think about all of those different things um, put together in order to have one fish that is going to survive in the habitat with the foods and with the prey that are around it. So this particular fish lives in kelp or seaweed forests and it hangs out in groups. Hanging out in groups is an advantage for this fish because it means that it's harder for predators to catch any individual fish um, and they can work together to catch their prey. This fish has large eyes which help it to see well in the dark conditions in the kelp forest and to spot predators and prey. It has sharp teeth which help it to catch and kill other fish to eat. In both of its fins it has really sharp spikes and that is to discourage predators from trying to swallow it. And its body is long and slender with a fairly large tail and that helps it to move quickly and moving quickly helps it to escape from its predators and to catch prey. Even the colouring of this fish helps it to survive. It's slightly darker on top and slightly lighter below so that when a, predat a predator animal is looking from above it's hard to spot against the darkness of the ocean floor and when something's looking from below it's harder to spot against the brightness of the sky. And I already mentioned predators include other larger fish and ocean mammals as well as octopi. So there you have it. There's my fish and it has a body that's designed so that fish can survive in its environment. 